Today I'll be talking about vendor lock-in, a concept I briefly talked about in my digital transformation series. Uh, I leave the link in the description below. Um, in this video, I'll be talking about what is a vendor lock-in, uh, why it's bad for business, and how we should avoid it. My name is Osama Arouz. I transform businesses for the digital age. Welcome to my tech zone. Okay, so what is vendor lock-in? Uh, 10 years ago, um, I had a project where uh, we're switching, rolling out all our enterprise equipment into an all flash array. Uh, we had servers, uh, disk arrays, um, printers, all other components will be connected. And we also upgrade our connection to fiber cables. Um, so part of the project we needed to run 42 fiber cables. So fiber cables connect with an adapter, it's called SFP or SFP Plus, that actually turns the optical traffic from the fiber into a copper contact. So you can plug it into a router, or a switch, or a server, or a disk array. So we needed for, uh, 84 of those, 42 in each end of the cables. The setup is my equipment or my department equipment in one end and connects with the fiber cables throughout different uh, areas on campus, uh, different locations, to the core router and the switches and the network equipment. Okay, so we set out to purchase 84 of those. Uh, I'm gonna round up, it's 10 years ago, education pricing, uh, just for comparison purposes. So we'll say we found a good brand, a good manufacturer for $100 a piece. But then the network engineer alerted me that the network equi equipment, the, uh, the larger setup for the organization has, uh, they operate in a way to not allow third-party equipment to be plugged into them. So if you plug in any other networking equipment, including those adapters, the system will flag it, will give you an error. Um, so give you an error. It's not gonna give you full functionality of the management software. And on top of that, support may give you a hard time troubleshooting with you any other, any other problems because you plugged in rogue uh, pieces of equipment into the setup. Okay, so we have to buy a branded SFP adapters. How much are those? Also $500. Whoa, pay five times as much for the same specs, same speed. Adapters, because it's branded ones. I thought maybe they are special, maybe they are faster, more durable, anything. After some digging, we discovered that the manufacturer we are buying the $100 SAP from is the same one that actually supplies the branded one. It's actually the same piece of equipment. They just slab a sticker on it for the brand and they add a firmware to it to identify that piece of the, that adapter that is the branded one. So when you plug it into that branded network equipment, the system will recognize it as a genuine adapter and will move on from there. It's not going to give you errors or anything. But there is no technical, technical specialty here. It's the same piece of equipment. Not similar, not comparable, not compatible. It's exactly the same thing made by the same manufacturer. So it was, it was aggravating. It was, so we had to purchase 42 of those, $100 a piece, and then 42 with $500 a piece. So you doing the math, $400 extra times 42. It's almost $16,000 just for the brand sticker. It was crazy. So that is what the vendor lock-in is. A vendor has gone out of their way to set up their equipment to prevent a genuine connection with different equipment, with other third party that do the same thing as their equipment. So you cannot plug in other equipment that 
would do something similar to their equipment. So you are forced to purchase their product line. You cannot purchase anything else. So obviously cost, because now you, pr you pay the extra price tag for the branded piece. But on top of that, not only is it a cost issue, it's, it's, a, it's a technology issue, issue. It's an innovation and uh, growth issue. Because now you're locked in with that vendor. You cannot purchase different vendors. Then you are tied to the development and the progression of that vendor. Even if they are a large organization, I actually found that the larger the organization, the slower and the slow the slower the response to the changes in technology. It's like a, a semi truck trying to turn around a, a tight curve. They they take some time because it's expensive and it, it disturbs the product lines, disturbs the existing customers. All there's a lot of reasons why. So if you find a new exciting technology that does that is performed better, technology changes every few months. There are there are new innovations. And younger companies are more flexible and more agile. They iterate faster. They adapt newer technology in the product lines. So if you want to go and, and, and introduce your system to these new technologies, you are faced with the dilemma that you really cannot bring them in. You have to wait for that vendor that you're locked in with to uh, introduce the technology, adapt the technology, maybe acquire some of these companies and, and introduce the product line. So you, you're, you're just behind. And on top of that, sometimes a company does not even uh, allow or the design has some flaws or in, may not be intentional in this case where one product line does not integrate with the second product line. So you cannot upgrade one product line to the next without dropping the entire uh, old equipment set up. So that leaves you with a few bad options. One is you just wait until all the equipment die out and you need to purchase a new set of equipment and then you go buy uh, new equipment. But then that means that you're going to have to drag this old equipment, degrade in performance, degrade in uh, um, reliability and everything and the technology itself until they actually you know about to be discarded before you get new ones um, and even 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 if that's the case if even if you want to do that you I mean it's not really pra practical because in in most setups there are different life uh, stages to your equipment. There are new equipment, equipment has been there for a year or so, and they're all operating at the same time, and they will all be rolled out at one point or, a, or another. So for you to move that same line, uh, product line, to another vendor gradually without being able to introduce that new or third party into the same setup, the makes, makes a, a huge problem for you because you will not be able to roll out. And that's the reason I'm making this video is be aware of vendor lock-in because one of the main important aspects of running an operation is to be flexible to move on with new technologies without dropping and losing all your investment of your existing technologies you should be able to introduce new technology, maybe even try it on a smaller scale, introduce it into production, and then grow from there. And as the old equipment uh, come of age to, to, to be removed, they, re they go out and you get, then the new equipment starts to, to continue without a hard cutoff day with old goes and new comes in because it's not practical and it costs a lot. But some, some companies had to do that because it couldn't stand that vendor locking. So if you're going into a new project and you are a decision maker, be aware of vendor locking. Make sure that the vendor you're, you're purchasing your equipment or service from allows you to introduce similar service, similar products from third parties, from another vendor, without affecting the performance of their service, 
without affecting the service level agreement, without affecting their support commitment. And uh, more and more because of the, the, the wave of newer companies and younger companies, more and more of those companies that kind of go out of their way to create the vendor lock and started to even advertise third party integration because they, it's a matter of survival now because it will be left out. That's pretty much it. See you next time.